Good morning and welcome to the Dittmarks YouTube channel where today, Wednesday, in the AM on this grey, dreary, overcast day, I am bored. I'm waiting for a delivery of a new pair of speakers to review and as always when you're sitting and waiting for a courier to arrive, time just seems to stop. So I thought I would shoot the first part of this video before the speakers actually arrived and then the next time you see me I should hopefully be unboxing them and we can really crack on with the video. So what have I got arriving today? I've got a pair of Chartwell LS6 speakers, which are actually made by Graham Audio, but under the Chartwell name. They're designed by Derek Hughes, who is one of those speaker designers that I just absolutely love his approach to speaker design. Now, it's important to note that these LS6s, although they fall into a BBC style of speaker, they're not actually a licensed BBC product. So they fall into a similar category of the likes of my SP22s or my SP31s or Rogers LS7Ts, and, uh, things like that, that they've got that BBC type cabinet. As where Graham Audio actually do proper BBC licensed products. So things like the LS35, yeah, the original one, the LS35A, the LS55, the LS59. They're doing a whole run of the BBC proper licensed products. But these Chartwell LS6s fall into what I would consider a domestic monitor. So they're similar to where you would pitch something like the Spendor SP22, that it's a BBC concept, but very much for home use. Now, there's nothing wrong with using a LS35A at home. Thousands of people use them at home. I've tested a pair here. They're phenomenal speakers. But their original intended purpose, particularly the LS35A, was monitoring in small confined spaces. All of the other LS designated speakers are for different environments. So you can research what, what they were for, but they vary in size for various different environments. And obviously the LS35A being the small one is for small confined places for monitoring human speech. So these Chartwell LS6s, when they finally arrive, I will unbox those, put them on the stands, and have a listen and then I will start talking about them on the next part of this video. Now there's two reasons I'm particularly excited about this. A, they're Derek Hughes design so I can't wait to hear them. B, they're a brand new pair of speakers. It's been ages since I've had a brand new pair of speakers to demonstrate. I don't mind repairing speakers, I quite enjoy doing that, but there is always something loitering in the back of your mind. Are they exactly right? So if you have to swap out a tweeter for one that's not an OE tweeter or if the crossover caps need replacing and you can't get exactly the right values, I'm always kind of concerned that they're not exactly as they're supposed to be. Also, as with age, so Spender SP22s, for example, are 1989. So in all of those years, are they still exactly to spec who knows, I, I, I haven't got the measuring equipment to actually test them right down to their original frequency sweep. But to my ears, they sound fine. But why I'm particularly looking forward to receiving these pair is they're a demonstration pair, so they don't need to be run in. I can take them out of the box, put them on the stands and have a listen straight away. So I'll get instant initial impact, instant initial thoughts, instant initial joy, hopefully. Um, on these speakers. So I'll cut it here and the next time you see me hopefully I'll be unboxing a nice set of Chartwell LS6 speakers. See you in a bit. Let's have a talk about the Chartwell LS6s. So you've got custom CAS drivers. Now this tweeter looks very similar to the one that I retrofitted into my SP23Es or the ones that Spendor use now. I'm sure this will be custom designed for Graham Audio's purposes. And also it's got protective grill over the front. Now, that could be just to protect the dome from being pushed in. However, anybody who knows anything about the T27 KEF treble unit that is used in the LS35A, that has the Celestian HF2000 protective grill over it. Again, probably just there to protect the dome, but if you measure that tweeter's off-axis response with the grill off, it's not as good as it is with the grill on. So there's a possibility that this protection grill 
is there to actually alter the off-axis response. I don't know that for definite. I would have to ask the powers that be that, but it's possible. Next to the HF unit, you'll see the Graham Audio Chartwell LS6 badge with a three-way switch giving you the ability to adjust the HF. So it's zero, flat, plus two, or plus one. Being a fan of running everything pretty flat, I've left that at zero. You've also got a Ciaz custom base driver, six and a half inch. Looks to be a doped cone, uh, which is gonna smooth out the frequency response, but again, custom made for Graham Audio by Ciaz. Beautifully made cabinets with this sort of matte finish on here and a feature that I saw many years ago for the first time on speakers, but it's more popular now, is having magnetic grill covers. I mean, that just is so much easier to get them on and off rather than these horrible grill pegs that sit in the baffle boards of some of the older speakers. And, you know, a flush, smooth, attractive looking baffle. Okay guys, so what I thought I would do, I've unboxed the Chartwells. They are set to zero on the adjustments for the HF, so they're running flat. I haven't listened to them yet, they're plugged in. I've left them to acclimatize to the room for a bit. I'm gonna put them on one of my favorite tracks and then you guys will see my first impressions live, so to speak. So here we go, I'm gonna hit play. Volume set to around a level where I'd listen to it comfortably with my SP22s, which I think these are a similar sort of um, level of efficiency, so it shouldn't be ridiculously loud, but let's have a go. Okay, that is literally the first time I've heard these and everything is set to neutral. There is a, I'll show you when I move the camera, but there's a, a selector switch to increase the HF by plus one or plus two. And that particular recording isn't the brightest recording ever, but I often choose that to test a pair of speakers just to see how much HF there is there. For example, on copper tweeters on the Celestian SL6s, the HF is difficult to detect on that particular track unless the volume is quite high. If you had it on something that's a lot brighter, like the pair of Tannoys I tested a few weeks ago, um, you can certainly hear a lot going on in the HF. The trouble with something like that is, is if you want to play it a bit louder, then the HF becomes completely overbearing. As well with the Celestian, you have to play it quite loud to get some sort of tonal balance with the HF. With these, I've found straight away they're very, very flat across the board so 
even if you played them at quite high volume levels, you would find them very pleasant to listen to. Um, they're not quite as bright or as sharp, if you like, as an LS358, and they've certainly got a lot more LF. So I'm going to pause this now because you don't want to see me listening to the speakers. You probably want to listen to the speakers. So I'm going to have another listen. I'll spend a few, maybe an hour or so, listening to various different tracks, and then we'll get down to the nitty-gritty of what these Chartwell LS6s are like. My love made you trip so your lips would be mine There are so many things I could do My love to convince you my love is divine There are so many words I could tell you There are so many moments of time But I say before we go to the land down below If I tell you I love you I'm mine to go, my love, there are so many places to find, there are so many worlds to explore, my love, there are so many stars yet to shine, there are so many secrets to tell you, there are so many men on the line, but I say before we go to the land down below, if I tell you, I love you, I'm alive. Okay, so to summarise, what did I think of the Chartwell LS6s? Um, on some reviews, they're saying they're like LS358s with the addition of bass. Um, I don't think they wow you as much as LS358s do. I remember the first time I plugged the Falcon Acoustics ones in here, they were just there. I was well impressed with those, totally blown away straight away. With the Chartwells, and I'm having to eat my own words here because on a previous review, I talked about the fact that speakers like Spendors don't wow you straight away. They don't, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that you plug them in and you sit there, hmm, and then you listen and you listen and you listen and slowly but surely that glorious, wonderful music comes to your ears and you find yourself immersed in it and you can spend hours upon hours of listening which is exactly what you want from a speaker you don't really want something that's just bam in your face and then 10 minutes later you're just turning the volume down you're turning the volume down and then eventually you turn it off because your ears have had enough it's a similar case with these chartwells that they don't wow you they don't you have to immerse yourself in the music and they are truly rewarding speakers the first thing I noticed straight away is the low frequency response. The LF for a cabinet of this size is absolutely impressive. So if you wanted something that sounded a little bit like an LS358, plenty of glorious mid-range and very, very nice extension in the top, top end, but with loads of bass, these would be the speakers for you. The LF is incredible. The LF differs considerably compared to my Spendor SP22s. So from 1989 right up to present day with these speakers, one of the significant improvements has got to be bass response. I can't believe a smaller speaker, smaller driver, smaller cabinet can produce way more LF than my rather gigantic SP22s. Um, to summarize, I think there are plenty of speakers out there that would get close to the Chartwells, possibly even in the second-hand market, which I'm a big fan of. You know, not everybody can go out and spend thousands and thousands of pounds on pairs of speakers. And a lot of people think that advancements in speaker technology have not really moved on at all. On initial listening, you might be forgiven for thinking that, but after spending a bit of time with some of these new designs, I've got to say things have moved on. Although these LS6s are reliant on quite old technology that the BBC first worked on, those design principles are still re very relevant to today. But with the modern driver techniques, you've got much higher power handling and the 
brake up modes of the drivers are way, way higher. So you've got a much, much more dynamic, much more modern speaker that doesn't necessarily fully sound modern. It's got a, an edge towards the vintage sound, which gives you that ability to listen to it for hours on, on end. But also with the ability of handling modern music, um, I played some quite up-to-date um, modern dance music and these absolutely loved it. They performed fantastically, particularly in the bass. The bass response, in all honesty, I've heard very few pairs of speakers that can, of this size that can compete with that level of low frequency response. Very impressive. So, would I buy a pair? I probably would. Um, they are considerably more expensive than what I paid for my SP22s, but they were clapped out when I bought them and I fixed them. So that's not really a fair comparison. But in today's market, there are plenty of other speakers out there that are around a similar sort of price. Russell K's are a similar price, some of the new Spendors, some of the Harbeth, some of the Sterling Broadcast. There's plenty of kind of BBC style speakers out there but they're gonna give you that very BBC sound and I don't know whether they'd be able to cope with the modern music quite as well as what these Chartwell LS6s would. So if the mission statement for these was, let's give you a vintage design with modern capabilities, 100% success. And I've just gotta say it again, bass response, incredible. For that size speaker, anybody will be well impressed with that. Anyway, that's the Ditton Works video for today. It's been very long-winded for me because I've had to spend several hours listening to these and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it, but it means the video is quite long-winded. So if I've repeated myself or gone over things I've already said, I apologise, I couldn't remember what I'd said uh, on the previous segments of videos. Anyway, that's the review for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, guys, and I'll catch up with you soon.